In this video, we're going to be uncovering the nightmare horrors of Jurassic World. Now, I know what you're thinking. Is it the Dilophosaurus? Because that is a nightmare horror. But no, it isn't the Dilophosaurus. This is a species which is rarely talked about or even known about in the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World franchise. This dinosaur is also the first and only so far parasitic dinosaur seen in the Jurassic Park franchise. And one of only four carnivores that use venom as a hunting method. The other three being Dilophosaurus, Compagnathus, and Proconthignathus. Yes, the Troodon was recreated for the original Jurassic Park, but was called to be terminated and scratched off the InGen's lists for unknown reasons. An unknown employee hid the animals in a secret quarantine pen before they were released by Dennis Nedry when he turned off the power to the wild of Isla Nublar. The Troodon's skin was a pale grey and they were intelligent as velociraptors but did not hunt like them. They had huge bulbous eyes to help them see better in the dark and the Troodon's presence would make any any surrounding carnivore flee in fear, including the legendary Velociraptors. But we're only just getting started on the real horror of this clone species. The nightmare reputation can be owed to its venomous bite, which would cause hallucinations, and in some cases, the victim would become extremely violent and attack nearby individuals. Unless the infection was treated by an extremely powerful tranquilizer, the victim will go into a series of convulsions, seizures, and the final stage of paralysis and brain death. But this is only the start of the Troodon's hunting tactic. Using this venom as their primary weapon, they would hunt by biting their victim and then fleeing, but stalking their victim as it suffered from the effects of the venom. That is when the Troodon would lay its eggs. Now, I did say the Troodon were nightmare horrors, and this is the next part, so if you're screamish, I would recommend skipping this part. When a Troodon was about to lay eggs, she would kill one of her prey as usual, but instead of eating her kill, she would instead partially bury it in a secluded area. While the victim was still paralyzed, she would rip open her victim and lay eggs in them, so in a human it would be the abdomen. It is presumed that the victim's body is used to provide both body heat and food for the hatchlings, which would proceed to eat the corpse from the inside out. This method of rearing young is like that of a spider wasp species, with a clone trodong being the only non-insect that uses this method. But we're only really just getting started with the trodon. Upon trodon's creation, Dr. John Hammond, founder of InGen, did not add Trodon to InGen's list because it did not fit his vision of Jurassic Park. Ultimately, Hammond ordered these clones to be destroyed along with the records of their creation. But the doctor who created them instead lied to John Hammond and secretly kept the Trodons on the island in the quarantine pens to continue studying them. Now, this is where it starts to get really interesting. Now, when Dennis Nedry disabled Jurassic Park's security systems in order to steal dinosaur embryos for Lewis Dodgson, he disabled the quarantine pens containing the Trodon pack as well, allowing them to roam freely. A massive mistake. Now, before we go any further, it is worth pointing out that this law comes directly from Jurassic Park the game, although Trodons are technically canon because they're part of Jurassic World the live tour, and Jurassic Park the game is considered soft canon. They're also part of Jurassic World Evolution. The first action of the free Trodons was handing it Nima Kraz, a woman who Nedry was supposed to meet at the East Dock to give him the embryos. If it wasn't for Dr. Harding, she would have died a few hours later. The next day, they attacked several people, including Daniel Cafaro, who was the pilot of a helicopter. The Trodons dragged his body to a room inside the geothermal power plant where a female laid eggs inside his chest. Due to the nature of the Trodons like in the dark, the big bulbous eyes actually glow in the dark, so it's an easy way to see them. This is how Nima was able to see the Trodons in the darkness. Now, we do know Isla Nublar is abandoned in 1993, and what has happened to these Trodons is unknown. As we do know, they make a comeback in Jurassic World which I'll talk about later, but in 1994, we can assume that they've either all died in the wild or were killed off by the 1994 cleanup team. The embryos were subsequently destroyed, causing the regrowth of the animals to be impossible, or so we're led to believe. As we know, construction of Jurassic World begins in the early 2000s, so is it the fact that they did capture some of these Trodons there, or were they all exterminated in 1994? But what we do know is that there is a Trodon in Jurassic World, the live tour, which is something we'll talk about in just one second, but these Trodon definitely feel at home in Michael Crichton's
Burton's Jurassic Park, the novel. The buggy eyes and overgrown teeth make the Trodon a little bit more of something out of a nightmare and really keep to the original theme of Jurassic Park with the horror. But alas, let's move on to Jurassic World and the Trodon's inclusion in Jurassic World the Live Tour. Now, Jurassic World the Live Tour is considered soft canon and has been labelled that by Colin Trevorrow himself. Now, the Trodon's appearance in Jurassic World the Live Tour shows that it could have either have come from Jurassic Park or they could have picked the Trodon up when they were on Isla Nublar creating Jurassic World. The Trodon itself is subject to experimentation, much like the Raptors or in Grady trains, they're doing a similar thing with the Trodon to see if they can learn and control their behaviours. However, her research comes to a terrifying halt as the Indominus Rex escapes his paddock and the park is thrust into chaos. A few months after the fall of Jurassic World, Kate discovers that her Trodon is still alive and this thrusts her on a quest to finish her research or simply relocate the animal. Now, there's a whole subplot of how she uncovers a dangerous conspiracy, InGen hasn't given up on weaponizing dinosaurs and they're very interested in Kate's Trodon. Any other information about the Trodon is simply lost at this stage, so we we do not know anything about Trodon past that point, which we can assume is at 2016. But as of 2016, the Trodon species was clearly still alive and the subject of experimentation. The way they reproduce and hunt their prey in the original Jurassic Park is simply terrifying and really matches the horror feel of the original Jurassic Park and goes hand in hand with the novel. I would love to see the Trodon included in a brand new Jurassic Park movie in the future, especially if they're going to bring back the horror feel which everyone is talking about and what everybody wants. They truly are a thing of nightmares. And if you've enjoyed this horror-esque video of Jurassic Park Jurassic World, there are plenty more of them on the channel. I recommend going and checking them out now. Massive thanks to my YouTube members and Patreons. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. It really does help and I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like it. Don't forget to subscribe because there's plenty more content like this coming up in the next few weeks. I'm Shadows and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers now. Bye-bye.